Oh! <gasps> All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be watching Reservoir Dogs, the next Quentin Tarantino movie. I know I'm doing these like completely out of order. I have like no order of how I'm doing these. I'm kind of just like, oh, which one looks interesting? And then I just choose it. I know absolutely nothing about this movie. I know zero. I have no idea what to expect from this movie, except that it's just a Quentin Tarantino movie. But I know it's a really early movie of his. It's like the first movie that really got his name out there and really helped get more eyes on his work on it. But yeah, I'm gonna stop wasting time. We're just gonna hop right into this movie. If you'd like to watch the full length reaction that will be available on patreon as well as early access to the next quentin tarantino movie will also be available on patreon and youtube membership so click the join button down below but anyways let's get started address book i found on a coat i haven't worn in a cool's age oh my god quentin looks so weird a little fucking goatee it's not even a goatee it's just like right here dick 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 chew toby chew it hurts I like the camera panning around them. It hurts. It hurts. Oh. it hurts. oh, there's Tim Roth. I know who he is. I didn't mention him in uh, Hateful Eight, but I know who he is. Shout out Kerbal Hulk. See, one thing that stands out about Quentin's movies is like, he puts a lot of thought into into like every single scene. He's not just making movies to make them. He's like, he's not just making a movie to make a movie and get a paycheck. He's making it because he loves it. And you can tell. All right, everybody cough up some green. It's for the birds. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're just doing their job. Hey, this girl was nice. Mm. She was okay. It's like when you're at Starbucks and they flip the iPad around and you're just like, you're at the self-checkout and self-checkout house for a tip. Like, what? I mean, that's really different than what he means, but like. I know, I used to work minimum wage, and when I did, I wasn't lucky enough to have a job that society deemed tip-worthy. You don't care? They'd count on your tips to live? You know what this is? Small the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. I have no idea if that's like originally from this movie or not, but like, I knew someone who would say that all the fucking time. So as soon as he was going like that, I already knew what he was going to say. Fuck all that. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, bro, like... I mean, I'm very sorry, the government... Everyone around this table looks like they're pretty wealthy dudes. You should tip. If you if you can afford to tip without it being an expense to yourself, I believe you should tip them. Even if, like, they technically don't deserve it or whatever. Come on, you. Cough up a bucket, cheap bastard. I paid for your goddamn breakfast. All right, since you pay for the breakfast, I'll put in. But normally, I would never do this. This is too much pride. I think it's more, I think it's foreshadowing more of a pride thing than it is just him being a cheap fuck. Like later in the movie, he's gonna die because of his pride or something like that. Cause to him, it's like about the principle more than him not being able to afford it. <laughs> was the movie over? <laughs> All right, well, that was a good little mini film, I guess. All right. Sorry, I'm gonna die. Hey. Oh, what the, what the fuck happened? Give me the air! She killed me, man! Huh? You're hurt, you're hurt real fucking bad! But you ain't dying! Help me out, he's gonna take care of you. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here and we're gonna wait for Joe. Who are we waiting for? Joe. Joe. Mm-hmm, good, good, good. This is fucking scared, man. Can you please hold me? Mm. I can't take you to a hospital. Fuck mm. down, man! You don't have to take me and just drive me up to the front. I won't tell him anything, man. I won't tell him anything. But it takes days to die from your wound. Time is on your side. It's not a fucking setup or what? Good shot. Fuck. Where's the uh, brown? Dead. The cop shot. This is so fucking bad. Is it bad? Yes. Somebody fucked us up big time, man. Mm -hmm. Someone double crossed them, got them set up by the cops. You really think we were set up? Yep. I don't think we got set up. I know we got set up. I mean, really, seriously. What, what are they doing? Robbing a bank? Just drive off, man, because whoever set us up knows about this place. They got the cops here waiting for us, man. They got the cops coming here right now. Yeah. I'll be right here looking at you. I'm right here looking at you, okay? No oh, I feel bad. Like, this movie just started, and, like, I don't want him to die. Thing, man, I didn't trust the guy. I felt funny about him, but I wanted to believe him, you know? Because if he's not lying to me, if he really is tie stick, then it's great, right? But no, it's never... Hmm, I have a feeling that this guy talking right now, I think thing I saw in the subtitles name is Mr. Pink. I feel like he might have set him up, you know, and now he's just playing it off as like he's paced about it, but really it was him. He gives me like Micah Bell vibes. Like he's trying too hard to be pissed about it. Okay. Let's go through what happened. Everybody starts calling ape shit. Mr. Blonde starts to shoot all the That's not correct. Alright, the cops didn't show up until after Mr. Blonde started shooting everybody. 
They didn't, they didn't let their presence be known until after Mr. Blonde became a madman. But they didn't make a, they, they made a move until after, after Mr. Blonde started shooting him. I mean, that's how I know we were set up. Oh, enough of this Mr. White shit. Wait, 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 man. Don't, don't tell me your fucking name, man. I don't want to know it. Jesus Christ, I ain't going to tell you mine. So in case they get caught, you can't rat on each other. Because they don't even know each other's names. They go by these code names. How did you get out? Yeah. I shot my way out. Yeah, I think Mr. Pink is lying. I mean, everybody panics. Hmm, what do you have a gun on, dog? Things get tense. Oh, shoot it's him. human nature. You panic. I don't care what your name is. You can't help it. Bro, Fuck, what? man. You panic on the inside. Hey, look. Did you see what happened to anybody else? Me and Orange jumped in the car, ground floored it. Gathering info? What are everyone else's? Mm -hmm. You don't think it's possible one of them got a hold of diamonds and... No, no way. I got the diamonds. I stashed them. Look, if you want to come with me, let's go get them right mm. now. Right this second, man, because I think... It... I say the plan becomes null and void once we find mm. out we got a rat in the house. Mm. We got the slightest... He set them up so they'd all have to split up once the cops get there and he could get away with the diamonds for himself. Yeah, he wants to dip right now with the diamonds. He's just letting Mr. White in on it, but I think he'll kill Mr. White because... Mr. White could still help him, so once he helps him, he'll kill him. Mr. Blue? You. I'm probably so wrong. Mr. Pink just keeps asking too many questions, dude. Like, a couple comments he's made. I do it is ridiculous. Oh. I mean, I can say I definitely didn't do it because I know- Bro, look at the way he's blinking. <laughs> for all I know, you're the rat. Mm. For all I know, you're the fucking rat. I mean, for all we know, he's the rat. Hey, that kid in there is dying from a- He dodged that. Thing, so don't you be calling him a rat! Okay, somebody's a fucking rat. He wants to take the attention off him. Get him- get Mr. White thinking that it's, it's anyone but him. I'm out of here, man. I'm gonna check into a motel for a few days. <sighs> Shit, did he fucking die on us? No. He's dead. Huh? Is he dead or what? He ain't dead. Okay, okay. Without medical attention, the man might not live through the night. The bullet in his belly is my fault. Now, while that might not mean jack shit to you, it means a hell of a lot to me. Mm -hmm. He's asking me to take him to a doctor. You know, I don't like the idea of turning him over to the cops. Save his... If we don't, he's gonna die. Yeah, it would at least save his life. He begged me to do it. All right, then I guess we take him to a hospital. I mean, if that's what he said, let's do it. But... If you don't know nothing about us, I say it's his decision. Well, he knows a little about me. Mm. So he can't. <laughs> wait, wait. You didn't tell him your name, did you? I told him my first name. Where I was from. It's too much. I swear to God, I thought he was gonna die right then and there. I'm trying to comfort him. And he asked me what my name was. Could have given him a fake name. I mean, the man was dying in my arms. What the fuck was I supposed to do? I fuck know. you and fuck Joe! They're not gonna have to show him a hell of a lot of pictures for him to pick you out. Mm -hmm. We ain't taking him to a hospital. And I'm very sad about that, but some fellas are lucky and some ain't. Fuck. Fuck you touching me for, man. <laughs> Go ahead, take a shot. Fuck you, White. I didn't create this situation. I'm dealing with it. I'm acting like a professional. To get him, they could get you. Mm -hmm. They get you, they get close yeah. to me, and that can't happen. You're looking at me like it's my fault? I mean, I understand Mr. Pink's, like, perspective. I, I get it. You have to, dude. Because, like he just said, they get Tim Roth over here. Oh, who the fuck is here? It's the blood. Mm. How'd you get in here without us hearing you? But then I also get Mr. White's perspective where he feels bad. He wants to help him, you know? Like, fuck. We think we got a rat in the house. I guarantee we got a rat in the house. Please just need security more. We're leaving. You should go with us. Nobody's going anywhere. Hmm. What do you mean by that? We're out of here. Don't take another step, Mr. Fuck, are you the rat? What's this guy's problem? What's your fucking problem? With any trick you have a madman, almost gets me shot! What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that fucking shooting spree! You almost killed me! Asshole! Dude, fuck Mr. Blonde. Are you gonna bark all day? Or are you gonna bite? Oh my god, bro. Are you gonna stop being an asshole and just talk? Like, tell us what you know? Like, What, are we on a playground here, huh? Am I the only professional? I guess. I'm pretty sure you're okay. <laughs> I'm fucking positive you're on the level. So let's try and figure out who the bad guy is, alright? Mm -hmm. Dude, this movie's really good. <laughs> this movie's really good so far. Already. I got something outside that, uh... I'd like to show you guys, so mm -hmm. follow me. To my car. What is it, what, is it a bunch of cops out there or some shit? 
I'm sure you'll like it. Come on. He's setting this up, bro. I don't trust this. You talk to nice guy, Eddie? Why yeah. the fuck did you say that in the first place? Because you never asked me. <laughs> you could have said it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, it's one of the cops. Oh, my God. Ain't a bad idea. Let's get him the fuck out of here. I trust Mr. Blonde. He's just kind of a dickhead. But I trust him. Oh, Vic Vega. Oh, tell him to come in. Why does it sound so familiar? Was it? Is that a name in Pulp Fiction? At some point, I I think Uma Thurman's character said it while they were having dinner, if I remember right. It was just like a throwaway line, though. How about a little uh, Remy Martin? Sure. Wait, you know who I just realized this guy is? This is the fucking cowboy from Hateful Eight and Bud from Kill Bill. Hey, Nettie. How is he? Is it? He has like the same exact like body language and posture. I'm like nine. This is just a way younger version of him. Yeah, it's 100 percent is him. You see that smile? That was 100 percent. That's just 100 percent him. Damn. So Quinn's had him in his movies since day one. They go way back. I bet kid's got a parole problem. Who's your PL? Seymour Skagnetti. Skagnetti. Fuck. Harry's a motherfucker. I can't come back to work for you guys if I gotta worry about uh, making some silly ass 10 o'clock curfew every fucking night. Look, we can get you a lot of legitimate jobs. You don't even work there. <laughs> but as far as the records are concerned, you don't. Yeah, get him a fake job yeah, so they can deceive the PO. I don't know if anybody's got the loot. I don't know who's dead. I don't know who's alive. I don't know who's caught. Dude, he, rem and he reminds me of like Jonah Hill, but with like a mix of Miles Teller. <laughs> Holy shit, Orange is dead. Mm. No. No, he's not dead. Okay, okay. But he will be if we don't get him taken. Not yet, not yet. Just looks like it, Freddy, because he just walked in. You're so fucking smart. Huh? Who did it? You think I did it? You think I fucking set you up? I don't know. No, I, no it doesn't make sense for Eddie to do it. All right, Mr. Fucking Compassion, I will call somebody. Who? I love how he's so concerned with Orange. He wants to save him so bad. Oh, he's really going out of his way to make sure he's, he's saved, you know? He's really doing as much as he can to save him. In the head. Nobody's got a clue what happened to Mr. Blue. Hmm. Either he's alive or he's dead. No shit. Take this to the bastard you told me about. Are you beating on him? Maybe he could tell us who the fuck set us up. Mm. Beat this prick long enough. He'll tell you you started the goddamn Chicago <laughs> fire. Now that don't necessarily make it fucking so. I mean, bro, he could have just been sent there. Like, it doesn't mean he knows exactly who. Doesn't mean he was on the case like that. You know, if they're going to send, like, 20 cops to the jewelry store, they're not going to tell you who was fucking behind it, who gave him that information. While I'm following you, I'll, I'll arrange some sort of a doctor for our friend. You can't leave these guys here with him. Why not? Because he's a fucking psycho. <laughs> this is what he was doing. Bad. Bad. Mm. Bad. If they hadn't have done what I told them not to do, they'd still be alive. My still a psycho for killing all of them. I should never have taken him out of the trunk in the first place. Yeah, now he knows what this place, where this place is, what this place looks like. You gotta kill him, though. Alone at last. Mm. I told you I don't know anything about any fucking setup. For the force of only eight months, they don't tell me. Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. He just seems like a really young kid, you know. I don't really give a good fuck what you know or don't know, but I'm gonna torture you anyway. <laughs> wow, just for fun. Yeah. To me, to torture. Oh. This is just some kid, bro. Uh, 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 I want to just shoot you in the head right there. That'd be quick. But he just wants to see him afraid and scared. And all right, Quentin Tarantino torture scene. I feel like this is gonna be really good. Of course, there has to be music. You gonna carve something in his like face? Oh, what'd you do? Oh, you guys, you're off! Please be something outside this door, bro. Well, you can light him on fire, bro. pour gasoline all over him, or like waterboard him with gas or something. Pour gas all over him and just light him on fire. That's. Don't do this, please. That burn a little bit. Yeah, it probably burns all the gas on his open wound on his ear. Uh. Don't, don't burn me, please. Uh. Uh. 
Okay, bro, if he's really, if he lights that shit, you know what I'm doing? Okay. This wouldn't work at all, but like. No! Fire scare no! Like, no! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Fuck yes. God damn, fuck Mr. Vaughn. Like when he was leaving to go get the gas, I was really hoping there for some reason there would just be cops outside to kill get him or some shit. Shout out Mr. Orange, bro. Fuck you. If this cop still lives somehow, I guarantee you he will put a good word in for you at least. You know, if they catch all of you somehow, you'd be like, well, that one guy did save me, so let's not fuck it. Believe in me more than Nash, I'm a cop. <gasps> It was him? Yeah, I know. And Marvin, you knew? You didn't say anything? <laughs> yeah, your name's Freddy. Oh my fucking god, he's the rat. Oh my god. God damn. That's why Freddy didn't care to go to a hospital anyway. He's like, bro, I'm a cop. I was, I'm undercover this entire time. And now I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> Fuck, I got that wrong. God damn, I always get that shit wrong. I always get shit like that wrong, dude. God damn it. <laughs> Hold on. Cops waiting to move the block away. Hmm. What the fuck are they waiting for? Till they're all back, till everyone's here. And he cuts my fucking ear off! I'm fucking deformed! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm fucking dying here! Yeah. I was gonna say, Tim Roth, Freddy here is in worse shape than Marvin. Like, Freddy's holding it together better than Marvin is. Not to make a move to Joe Cabot shows up. Yeah. They said he's on his way. Don't pussy out of me now, Mark. Damn. Well, dude, fucking, I'm surprised Marvin didn't talk regardless. Like, damn, he held that shit. That he knew Freddy was the cop the entire time. Like, to do this job, you gotta be a great actor. Yeah. Naturalistic. You gotta be naturalistic as hell. Dude, being an undercover cop is probably hard as fuck. I gotta memorize all this? You gotta tell a story by yourself and you have to know it by heart. Like, it's really you. Now, the things you gotta remember are the details. Mm -hmm. It's the details to sell your story. You couldn't get any weed any fucking where they Hmm, nice posters. As long as I helped her out that weekend, she had a brick of weed she was selling. She didn't want to go to buy alone. So I walk into the men's room, and who's standing there? Four <laughs> Los Angeles. They all stopped what they were talking about, mm. and they looked at me. I don't even know what I would do if I walked in on that. I'd be like, what the fuck? All my senses, blood in my veins, everything I have is screaming. Take it off, man. Mm -mm. Just bang in the face. And I'm just standing there drenched in panic and all these sheriffs looking at me and they know. I like how he's telling the story while it's showing you. It's pretty cool. And smell all the weed on him. So, hey, so, so anyway. You know how to handle that situation. Funny guy. You remember the Fantastic Four? Oh, yeah, with that uh, invisible bitch and uh, flame on and shit. Mm -hmm. Johnny Storm. Shout out Chris Evans. Looks just like the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen the first and the second uh, Fantastic Fours. Only the original cast. Not like the remake with Michael B. Jordan. I haven't seen that one. But the very first like original two I have. That's why I recognize the Silver Surfer poster. <laughs> you know, I'm actually kind of happy Tim Roth turned out to be the cop. In this, honestly, because I was kind of bummed if, like, he was going to die. It's like, he was barely even in this. I'm like, he's a really good actor, dude. He's really good. So I'm happy he's finally getting his screen time. Don't pussy out of me now. They don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know shit. E. Lois. E. Lois. E. Lois. Mm -hmm. Just to well, do things, do things. Like, what? What would mm -hmm. he do? He beat her up or something? Okay, bro, you said that like a fucking narc. I'm sure if like they showed this scene before, before they revealed he's the cop, I probably wouldn't have even thought twice about what he just said, like how he just said that. Maybe I would, I don't know. Probably would have just been like, hmm. Why can't we pick our own colors? No way, no way. Try it once, it doesn't work. Too much personality. Since no display cases are being fucked with, no alarms should go off. We're out of there in two minutes, not one second longer. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is after. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was trying to say, like, what the fuck? This is, like, after they just robbed the store, <laughs> okay? Bro, he kind of looks like Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Damn, man. Tim Roth is like, fuck. Hold it! Hold it! Right there! 
Ooh, oh, she, yeah, she shot me. So that's what he was talking about. Damn, he feels, yeah, he feels bad for shooting her, dude. Like, he had to, but... <sighs> yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Larry. Yeah. Yeah, now they're all gonna, gonna be like, what the fuck? Eddie's gonna be pissed. Mom went crazy. Messed the cop's face. Cut off his ear. Was gonna burn him alive. Yeah, but like, from Eddie's perspective. Yo! Damn! It's like, why should they care about the cop, you know? He was gonna kill the cop and me. Mm -hmm. When you guys walked through the door, he was gonna blow you to hell and make half for the diamonds. Make Blonde seem like the rat. He talked about what he was gonna do when he was slicing him up. Doesn't make sense. It makes perfect fucking sense to me. Hmm. You weren't there during the job, Betty. You didn't see how he acted. We did. Take the satchel of diamonds and scram. I'm right about that, right? That's correct. That's your story? The man you just killed just got released from prison. All he had to do was say my dad's name, but he didn't. He kept his fucking mouth shut. Yeah, so you know he's loyal. Fuck. He did four years for us. <laughs> he's just gonna decide out of the fucking blue <laughs> to rip us off? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Tell me what really happened. <laughs> What the hell for? Oh, okay, Joe's here. The cops are swarming. Be more bullshit. This man set us up. Fuck, he knows? What the fuck are you talking about? I hope Mr. White survives. That lump I of like shit's him. working with the LAPD. I just, just want to say that now. <laughs> but you're wrong. Like hell I am. Joe, trust me on this. You've made a mistake. Mr. White's defending him, so it makes him look terrible. The cocksuck that tipped off the cops, and a Mr. Brown and Mr. Blue killed. How do you know all this? Going ahead when I wasn't 100%. That's your proof? Mm. You don't need proof when you have instinct. Ah, that's it? Well, um, me's right. Ooh. Fuck. You lost your fucking mind. You're making a terrible mistake. I'm not gonna let you make it. Put our guns down. And let's settle this. The fucking conversation. Hell no. Larry, <laughs> stop pointing that fucking gun at my dad! Ooh, no! They all died. No! Well, it's me. Oh, Mr. White's still alive. Oh, Tim, oh, Freddy, Tim Roth is still alive, but like, okay, well, the only three characters that I like to survive, let's go. I was definitely wrong. He's just, he's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And you know what? I'm happy I'm wrong about Mr. Pink. I like them. I like him. There you go. Oh, no, that's Mr. Pink outside getting into a firefight with the cops. <laughs> Oh, he's holding him like he did in the beginning. Mm, feels guilty. And yeah, now Mr. White feels like shit. Are you gonna kill him because he's he just told you? No. No, don't do it. Don't do. No, he could vouch for you. He could vouch for you. Get you less time. Do it. Drop the gun, man. Don't drop the gun. Fucking gun. We're gonna fucking blow you away! Give him Mr. Orange. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, well that was Reservoir Dogs. Shit. Alright, I'm so happy. I knew nothing about this movie before hop jumping into it because it made it so much more interesting. And like I probably should have seen it come like Okay, in hindsight, Tim Roth being the cop, okay, that's pretty obvious in hindsight. The thing is, like, for the most part, before they revealed it, he was unconscious, barely saying anything. So it doesn't give us any chance to really suspect it's him by him, like, saying the wrong thing by accident, you know? I kind of figured it was Mr. Pink, just because of, like, how hard he was trying to sell, how pissed off he was. But, like, nah, he wasn't. Like, <sighs> I'm, I always get this kind of stuff wrong. I always get it wrong. <laughs> But well, whatever, it's still fun to try and figure out anyway. You know, this was a heist movie, but you never really, you never see the heist. Only the aftermath, only the pre, like only the pre-planning in the heist, and then skip right over that, and then the aftermath of it, them all, of their getaway, and then meeting back up at the warehouse and everything, talking about what just happened. You know, it's like Game of Thrones in that sense. Like, like sometimes you don't even get to see the battle. <laughs> like, they just skip right over that. They did that a couple of times and honestly i don't mind it like it works it works really well for this movie so and it worked really well in game of thrones too so i don't know where i would rank this in all the quinn movies quinn tarantino movies we've done so far for the channel because this was so good too 
like it's so unfair to like rank them like one two three because it's like you could easily make an argument that you can rank them in any order so okay i don't want to be like oh this is my new favorite one even though i had a lot of fun during this movie i can't just be like this is my new favorite one after every single movie <laughs> you know i think it's just it's recency bias for sure ah it's so hard to say because i really enjoyed hateful eight i know that's not the consensus number one movie but i i really enjoyed Hate. i personally really enjoyed hateful eight and tim roth was in both wow crazy but I, I also really enjoyed kill bill both movies i'm gonna count both movies as one mo as one because i know that's how it was intended to be quentin does not miss he just he doesn't miss bro just he he's cooking with every single movie bro okay okay i really enjoyed reservoir dogs i really enjoyed pulp fiction i really enjoyed kill bill i really enjoyed inglorious bastards and he i really enjoyed all of them so far okay i'm really curious into like what the consensus ranking is but obviously there are some like i haven't seen like, okay i just put up this random order from online they have number one pulp fiction number two jackie brown that's when i haven't i have we haven't seen that one yet so i'm excited to get to it but just haven't seen it uh once upon a time in hollywood is number three okay i haven't seen that one either oh kill bill volume two as four. Oh, and then kill bill volume one as five eh. You gotta combine them as one movie, but I will say I did enjoy the second Kill Bill over the first one. Just more character development in that. And then Reservoir Dogs is six. Eh. And Glorious Masters at seven. Death Proof at eight. We gotta see that one still. The Hateful Eight at nine. And then Django Unchained at ten. Okay, okay. I mean I can't I can't say like I disagree with this, even though like just take out the ones I haven't seen. Like, I still can't, like, disagree. And we also haven't seen True Romance, too. We gotta get to that one, too. I've heard a lot of great things about that one. But yeah, that was Reservoir Dogs. Comment down below what you thought about this movie. Down below in the comments. And if you liked the video, like the video. And thanks for watching.